What's up, YouTube? All right, this is going to be... I'm not going to say it's going to be a quick update. Let's just face it. My updates are not quick. All right, so I actually had to re-video this beginning part because I did the whole other one out of focus. So if my camera changes a little bit from different angles and stuff, that's why. So I have an update on the Batrium Watchman. Totally my fault, by the way. So the way the Batrium system works, you have a, off the long mons, you have a red and black wire, which is, which powers the long mon itself. And then there is a yellow and blue wire, which are the data wires that carry all the information back to the Watchmon. I've been re-watching some of the videos that I made for the installation. That's why I haven't made any more videos yet because I'm waiting on my new Watchmon because I need to redo part of it. Okay, so here's what it is. Reading the directions, I tend to read into things too much and the way I read it, I thought you could technically hook up the yellow and blue wires to the inbound or outbound on the Watchmon. I thought that because they're data wires. I figured all it is is a bunch of like Morse code. Okay, so what I was trying to do, <laughs> how I ended up letting the magic smoke out, boom, is basically what happened is, is I swapped the yellow and blue RX and TX. I, I swapped them like this, thinking that since it's just data wires, it shouldn't be a problem. The reason I did that was because I wanted pack one in the power rack to show up as pack one in the, the list uh, in the software. And of course I wanted pack 14 to be on the very end. And I thought since they're just data wires, th it shouldn't be a problem. And, and I thought I read the directions. It didn't technically say you could do that. I thought it was saying that I could do that. It just wasn't suggested to do that. So I thought it was okay. Turns out you're not, you can't do that. You can't do that. You blow it up if you do that. Boom. Okay, so <laughs> as I'm trying to figure all this out, I, I, I send a message to to Jaren and I'm explaining to him, well, why can't I do this? It's just data wires. And he's like, no. And then I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, yeah, but it still should work. And then he says, okay, look at it like this. You talk out of your mouth and you hear out of your ears. And if you swap the two, it just doesn't work. That's when I noticed in my videos what I did wrong. So I wanna let you guys know that it is totally my fault. So I, I figured the red and black wires will take care of the voltage and the yellow and blue wires were gonna do all the Morse code. You can't do that, so don't do that. I guess technically, yeah, I did hook it up backwards. All right, so yeah, I'm a big idiot, I know. I'm a mechanic, I'm not a computer software type of person. So I blew it up and I have a brand new shiny Watchmon on its way from Australia. And that kangaroo, I'm telling you, he better be swimming his ass off because I cannot wait to get this back up and running. All right, so once the Watchmon shows up, I will adjust my video a little bit in that one little section and then I'll release it. <laughs> I, re I changed a pump on my solar hot water heater. It wasn't working for a few months because I just didn't have time to get to it. I got to it and one of the pumps were bad. Ooh. And this was the bad pump. Basically, I think what happened, this looks a lot better. I actually spent like a good time cleaning it and then I found the wires were just shorted or something in there and they were burnt up so that's why the pump wasn't working and before I cleaned it out I mean it was just full of like muck water everything was like nasty black this part of the pump this was completely nasty black and I cleaned all that out the cartridge itself it does still spin but I don't know if I would use it again because it probably leaked somehow but inside there was just full of nasty crap. So my solar water heater system, I don't know. I don't know where it leaked at. I don't know if it started with the cartridge or if it started, you know, on a seal or, or what. This little guy is what made it all quit working. And yeah, gee gown. So I ordered another one of these off of eBay used and it said it was from a working system. And here's the picture. And of course, when I tested it out, it would not spin, but I think it was just the cartridge was dry for X amount of time, so it was kind of stuck. So all I did was stuck a screwdriver through the hole to where the impeller was right here and broke it loose, and now it works great. This is a taco or taco pump. I call it a taco pump, of course. Uh, they are a quarter horsepower and 0.7 amps, and they spin roughly 3,250 RPMs. I kind of 
<laughs> I am probably, well, I am definitely using this improperly because it says the max water temperature is 116 C or 240 degrees Fahrenheit. I guarantee I'm going way over that with this solar hot water heater system. I mean, it's not the pump's fault. It's my fault. I'm just using it improperly. <laughs> So I'm actually surprised it lasted as long as it did. I also had the pump probably mounted incorrectly. I did have it mounted with the motor side down. I probably should have had it something like that or even like this. So if there was a leak, there is a couple holes in here and it probably, it might have leaked out of there first and saved the pump. So, you know, not knowing pretty much what I'm doing and just making the shit up as I go. I mean, you run into stuff like this. So I'm not gonna show my solar hot water heating system in this video, basically because it's nighttime right now and it's kind of underneath our bedroom. At least the, the tank is. I, I could do a whole another video on that if people are interested. Now keep in mind, I didn't you know follow somebody else's system except for one part of it. The rest I kind of made up myself and I know it needs improvements you can list all those improvements down below in the comment section once you see the video if you want but um, it you know it's not the best but it does work it heats up the water heater and since I tapped into it I ran the PEX underneath my kitchen floor over here and I mean the floor gets nice and hot at least for a good five hours we'll say at least in the winter time. If you guys want to see what that system looks like, I'm gonna to have to rig up some lighting back there because you think over here is bad where the power rack sits right now. Back there, there's less light. So I didn't do any videoing of me fixing the system just because there's no light and I was kind of running out of time. But I can at least do a video on it and go over what I did and possible improvements and how it works and whatnot. So the solar hot water heating system that I made up is working great now. Oh, let's see. What else? Oh, so a couple weeks ago I got this little power bank thingy, mini power wall right here. And it has like, oh, uh, like the little lipo packs or prismatics or something inside there. And I just found a charger. It took, it takes uh, 19 volts input. And I found a laptop charger just like five minutes ago. So I am charging it up right now. Focus. So I don't know if it's gonna work. I guess I'll at least cycle it a few times and see if it lasts. You wanna see something else hilarious that I've been doing with my camera? So it's kind of an 18650 mod, but not really. All right, so with my Canon camera, it came with this little itty bitty battery right here. It is 7.2 volts, 1,040 milliamp hours. And it doesn't last, you know, it's a tiny battery. It doesn't last very long at all. So then of course, like a week later, I bought two of these cheapos. These are supposed to be 1,350 milliamp hours. I can't even get these things to work in my camera anymore. I don't know what the deal is. Like they just quit working, all of them, all of them quit working. But if you test them, the battery voltage is full and in the chargers, they charge just fine. I just cannot get them to work. I don't know if it's my camera or if it's something else. So my workaround for that was, let me unmount it from my tripod here. You can laugh at this too. I made my own little battery pack. <laughs> So a few months ago when I did that other TP4056 charger, he had a couple extra of the three cell holders and I cut off that end right there. These were the practice ones. I just made a little 2S 3P battery pack. And of course it's, I just got it Velcroed to another laptop shell. But holy crap, man, this thing is awesome. And you can put, well, whatever kind of cells you want in there, your good ones, your bad ones, and it lasts forever. I can record all day because I do sometimes Um, uh, in my videos that I have to cut out. And there's so much of stupid shit that I say that this ridiculous battery pack 
works great. And of course, I do have a dummy battery inside the camera, and that comes out through this wire right here, and I just found another jack that would fit right into it and just kind of wired it up. I don't know if I'll be able to use this. Probably not. It probably doesn't put out enough amps. That was one of the original reasons why I was looking for those little buck boost converters because I didn't want to get a 2S charger or, or anything like that. I just wanted to replace the batteries. I tried the little buck boost converters and it would charge fine, but the camera had too much of an amp draw to go through the system, I guess, unless I hooked it up wrong, which is probably true. So I just made this and this works awesome. And of course, I'll put a link down below to the dummy battery if somebody else wants to do a ridiculous mod like this that is super cheap uh, you can and what's great about that is I can just pull out the batteries and throw them in the charger and grab some new ones and throw them back in and I'm ready to go in like 10 seconds and I can go all day all right well now I can't move my camera I'm gonna actually reattach this to the tripod so I'll be right back Let's see, over here, these are the red Sanyos that came from a bunch of the medical packs that I got. And brand new, these are 1850 milliamp hours, according to the cell database on DIYpowerwalls.com. A good portion of them are checking around 1700. I mean, there's a few below, but most are in the 1700, so they're almost brand new. I don't know what I'm going to do with them quite yet. I don't know. I mean, I could technically use them in my power wall. I could just add more batteries to one pack to kind of equal the packs that I already have in there. I don't know yet. That might be an option, though. I mean, I could definitely get to the next 10 kilowatt by using lower milliamp cells. I may do it. I don't know. We'll see. I still have a crap ton of batteries over there that I got to take apart and check. I just haven't had any time to take them apart. These are the moly cells, and these are awesome. I wish I could get more of those. Those are all like 2200s and up. These green ones and this one, these were all in some of the medical packs too, but these are all around 1,000 milliamps, and most of them are testing around 1,000 milliamps, so those are kind of new as well. Oh, and I got all this stuff charging over here, and I got the 18650 Awesomeness battery charger thingy doing its thing right up there. Oh, and I have a question. You remember the PCM60X that I got, and Eric sent this little wireless card thingy so I can hook up to it and log into it from from this antenna right here. I, I don't know how to get this thing to work and I've had a couple people ask me how to get it to work and I still cannot figure it out. Like I said, I am a mechanic. Stuff like this and software, I guess I don't get along with. So if anybody knows how to get this thing to work, please let me know and then I can make a video for other people to to get it to work because I've looked and it's either in a different language or it's in a different language. I can log into it and I can change stuff in it. You're supposed to set it up so this will connect to your own wireless network and then you can log into it from there. But once I save it, it like disappears and I can't see it again so I have to reset it. Yeah. I'll put a link down below for this too because I need some serious help with this thing. And I guess a lot of other people do too. Let's see, I got something else from Banggood. <laughs> and I still need to do the video on the X-Tar Dragon video from Banggood. <laughs> It's actually a pretty sweet charger. It's going to give the Opus a run for its money, but the cost is more. So, I mean, everybody's still going to choose the Opus, but it does some pretty sweet stuff. Oh, and I also wanted to say for the Patreon members, a couple weeks ago, they, they, they really, really messed up. If you were supporting somebody, let's say like me, for a dollar a month, okay? So you would pay a dollar. I would see like, we'll just say like 87 cents of that dollar. The rest would go to, to Patreon because you know, it's their website and their fees and all that kind of good stuff. Well, they reversed it. So if you sent me a dollar, you would get charged like an extra 37 or 38 cents. So people were getting like overcharged. A lot of people support a lot of different channels. So if you, if let's say you have 50 channels that you support. You get charged a dollar 
dollar like 37 per so everybody was dropping patreon i don't blame them one bit if i was trying to support many people just a dollar each and i just got a huge bill after that of course i would drop them too so i don't blame any of the patreon members for dropping me like a bad habit it's cool but I would like to thank all of the guys who did stick it out with me. It was only a couple of weeks or a month or something. And guess what? Patreon has reverted back to their normal everyday pay fee thingy. So now if you are a dollar Patreon member, you're only going to get charged a dollar, which you should be. And I absorb all the fees and all that kind of stuff, which is which is great. And if you want to come back, thank you again. And if you do want to buy a t-shirt, I'll leave the link down below. They are $24 shipped in the United States. And if they are overseas, the lady down at the post office said it'll be like about $14 to $15. So if you're anywhere else in the world and you want a t-shirt, it would be $21 plus $14 or $15 shipping. All right. So I will see you guys on the next one. So, uh, but I, and, and I, I re got it. It, it, I, whenever, you know, so, so, uh, I, you technically four, four, I, I thought, well, I, and if you now, all right. So after I said, uh, it, and they spend roughly 300, it says a hundred and there's some beeping. I'm um, 240 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, my solar hot water sees system sir um, 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 according to the Dell the Dell side of Sata base I've been able to get it work and um, there's there's a whole nother reason why I did this back in the day but it's all changed now so we're not gonna die